homemade rifle. Hold on. Homemade, look at this shit. Really? Oh, wow. Bring to you man sex, fancy soap, strong men folk. Yeah, now go. <laughs> Put your. <laughs> Be amazed by the clarity of the water. Wow. Look at just how clean and clear it is. Fuck. Wow, man, it's like a, it's like a blue almost. That food was delicious. I'm all done. Hey, uh, rice with canned mackerel, canned tuna, or canned duck, goose or something, duck. And yeah, and with green beans, it was good. Rice, very good. And they have bananas over here. And, uh, oh. So it's been an adventure. Thank you guys. You know, beautiful water up here, the insects and all the little flower making and the village people out here and yeah, this is what we have. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you said it's too far? <laughs> so we're off, we just grabbed something to eat. Check out this guy's hair. And uh, smoking a joint. Yeah, man. And uh, I guess we're going to this other camp with this old guy. My athlete's foot is freaking killing me. So, I don't know, we've been walking since 9 a.m. at least. Um, we probably left at 8 a.m. And now it's 5. So we only have another hour until sundown and uh, yeah, so this is the shit that I'm have to talk to you and go over and yeah, it's very rough so stay tuned. You can't really see it but Matt watch this guy, he's kicking with his toes. Very strong. Very strong. Crazy. These guys' feet are marrying <laughs> uh, a long journey. Ten hours walking now. Starting to get dizzy and shit. You can hear all the owls out here. Oh man, my foot is fucked. Oh my, the athlete. But it's off. Okay, so we're coming up on our village and hopefully we get to stay here. And uh, look at all these dogs, holy shit. And look at all these people. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh boy. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. He's a local man. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. 
Hello. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, hello. Good afternoon. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I am so tired, man. Holy cow. Very tired. Is that a watermelon or cucumber? No, watermelon. 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 Oh, the yellow? Yeah, yellow red. Yeah, the yellow red. Red, it's a cucumber. 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 Yeah. Orange cucumber. Can I see one? Oh. Uh, cucumber. Uh, different one. Orange one. Yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. This one is orange. This one is the other one. Wow. That's a young one. This is an old one. Uh, old, young. Wow. Wow, well, so they're welcoming. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry I'm very tired, but yes. Thank you. Look at these real axes from like premature time. Mm. Amazing. Old. Hold on, hold on. So uh, this is what we, me and the kids were playing earlier. I mean, I say kids, a 20-year-old acts like a 10-year-old here, but hey, they know how to have fun. So, yeah. Just uh, with the creek here, how fast it is. Look at the beautiful water. Clear. We just go over here and jump in and uh, flow down. Yeah. Very fast. Uh, but man, off. On our other journey here. And um, I guess it's supposed to be like an hour, but maybe probably two hours with me. Walking pretty slow. My uh, athlete's feet is uh, a little better. I kicked a whole bunch of Vaseline on, so maybe that'll soothe it out until we get to the next spot. But uh, yeah, this was the camp we stayed in. We had a wild pig last night for food and uh, had Sago this morning and stuff. Yeah, okay. Look at this view. <laughs> Crazy man's. Look at this beautiful water. Yes. Lola Creek. Lola Creek. Lola Creek. Big river standing down there. Hello! Hello! So I'm uh, leading the way here now. Everyone's trying to push me, push me. Yeah, so, you know, I have to look out for snakes and bugs and flowers and beautiful trees and birds. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. yeah. Look at this. This is like poke your eye out. Yeah, poke your eye out. Jeez. <laughs> This is how they act. <laughs> 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 the pigs 
got here. So that that call was a Taiboom tribe. What tribe? What? The, that call. Tribe. What the tribe? Tribe. Family. Family. Kolum. 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 Goy. 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 Okay, now we're gonna eat some watermelon and relax at this beautiful creek here. Wow. Yes, hello. <laughs> they cut it like that with their machete. Look at all this watermelon we got here. <laughs> Fresh, hot watermelon. Uh, this metal comes from mountain. This is an ancient. No, sorry, this is stone. Axe. Yeah, stone axe. Yes. Yeah, this stone comes from a mountain in Yerem village, and uh, this this stone is they usually to cut, making gardens and uh, cut trees. And also, this stone is special. They are buying uh, Mary when women's married. Then this one is like a kina, kina to buy a Mary. To buy your wife. Yeah, buy, buy her buy wife. Buy your wife. Yeah, wife. From the father. Yeah. Uh, this so you would have to buy. Yeah. Give buy. maybe one or two. You you can wow. give for two three. To buy a um, Mary, and uh, also you can give a pig. A pig. Pig on yeah. the plus, yeah. In many countries, still in Indonesia and Timor Leste, it's uh, pigs. They grow up, uh, they give like a goat and a pig, maybe cow, <laughs> to marry their wife. But here, you guys, when you marry your wife, do you still stay like your brother marries? The sister of your wife? Yes, we still in, stay in the family. The family yeah. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Yeah. So when they marry, they they take all the family and interbreed them together. But they're not. It's not uh, incest, so it's pretty smart and good idea. So you know, stay with the family. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And this is why their families become 50, 100 people. And they bring me out here for free and we eat all this fresh watermelon from a village free. Because they don't care about money out here. They just live like normal human beings. Get a couple clothes and some solar panels and they're happy. Yeah, this one's because when the metal comes, we leave these things and we use metal today. Yeah, right. You use machetes and axes. Yeah. And also kina money and this country is the pigs stuff. Look at this lady carrying all these puppy dogs. <laughs> oh, and you guys think you guys have a rough life. <laughs> so this is like my first time getting caught in rain and uh yeah you can hear it maybe i don't know but uh yeah it's nice hopefully it don't rain any harder and create some kind of landslide oh it stinks yeah it stinks it's wow yeah it smells like rubber okay yeah, peel it up yeah, it's yeah, peel it up. Go, yeah. pull it. Look, it stretches. Yeah, this is a rubber tree. Yeah, rubber tree. Ah, uh, yeah. And then this is like the inside, I guess. I don't know, it's dying or they use it for something. You use the rubber for something here? Yeah, use it for making a fire sometimes. Mm. And then you can sell it for money. They are uh, buying. Man, it stinks. Yeah. This is a big rubber tree. Yeah, big and this same? Yeah. Same, huh? Huh. Yeah, so you use it for selling it, but what else do they traditionally use it for? Like clothes? They never use the traditional ways. Why not make shoes out here? No, we don't know. I'll 
Oh, well, your feet are okay, huh? Your feet are very strong to walk on rocks all day long. Yeah, so this guy says they have fresh coconut up at the top. So if you come in, this is a way of saying, hey, don't touch my coconut. You see all the brush up? And this guy said that villages start fights over this stuff and will kill people. And this is what the village fighting is all about. So it's about food and not going on people's properties and just not, you know, people not having respect. That's what it really is. But yeah, it's a pretty cool sign, okay. I would have never guessed that. I would have been like, what the hell is all this shit in the way? <laughs> I need a coconut! Coconut is so good for you and you can make coconut oil so easy and you can make oh, coconut juice and coconut, pure coconuts and shaved coconuts and you can cook with coconut and you can, it's so good with it dehydration for you and oh yeah we have, uh, made it what the hell we have made it to the other village and hopefully this don't break and uh yeah different houses already see the different walls last house used like sticks what, what is this house made out of? Palm tree? Bamboo. Wow. Look at the view. Wow. Oh, yeah. But no creek here. Why do these people want to live not by the creek? <laughs> That's the best place. <laughs> huh? Greens. Hello. Yeah, we've been walking for hours. We're taking a rest. It's just beautiful out here, walking on this creek for hours long. So this is the airstrip that the rich missionaries come here to the villages and brainwash everybody yeah cut all the trees down burn them they don't even use them hardly for their houses they could have made nice houses the missionaries should have brought tools and medicine and other stuff with them but no they just bring a bible sad so i just kind of wanted to explain a little bit here why some pictures are going to go through and uh, as you can see, my film is, maybe some of them are long, maybe some of them are short. I don't really know if I should make the film and then I should talk afterwards, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. I'm just one person. This view right here that you're looking at with the mountain, uh, the water and the mountain in the back, it was like a Disney film. It was so truly amazing. It was the river was kind of a twirling river and it was going straight up the mountain. It was breathtaking. One of the most beautiful sights. Um, so this picture coming up is the home and the way that they do their home. So the homes, they were uh, amazing places because they were, for one thing, they were up really very high. And uh, what that does when the home is up pretty high is uh, well for one the bugs stay low and insects stay low the second thing they do is they're all constantly cooking in their house and so therefore the smoke is kind of going everywhere and the smoke also takes away the insects I don't remember any time where I was bombarded by a lot of mosquitoes or even flies uh, which was pretty nice like being in the jungle that far away. I can't tell you how many times I've been on farmlands Eating and flies or mosquitoes are just everywhere, but being in PNG it was very rare uh, Anyways, I kind of just want to explain to you about the situation about the missionaries uh, I know my films are kind of long and maybe boring. I, I really think that they're amazing but it's just up to you, you know, I mean, of course, I'm not a movie editor and I don't have a million dollars to make movies here. 
I, as you can see in my films, it's just me walking and talking and asking questions and trying to do all this stuff all by myself. So it's quite uh, uh, amazing just that I can do it, you know? Anyways, um, I want to explain to you, I don't care if you're religious or not, uh, I really just kind of want to explain to you how the missionaries work and maybe you might be fed a different uh, agenda of how they work or maybe your family or friends or something like that was part of missionaries and maybe they did help and I'm sure there's many good people out there but let's refer to how the missionaries kind of started out long long time ago you can kind of even see how missionaries have did things in movies and portrayed things and many people might just believe oh that's just a movie and oh that's nothing well let me tell you something every single thing in this world has truth to it because a human being cannot draw something that they cannot see it's impossible you can put something together like an elephant and a shroom or something like this and you can put it together and then you can make you know have an elephant shroom or something but you could never a blind person could never draw an elephant they wouldn't have wouldn't have any idea what it is so it's impossible so movies work the same exact way movies you cannot create a movie unless you've seen it before so or some type of story was told and then therefore they narrate it into another story well this is possible and this is why a lot of movies that say that they are uh, based on true stories that doesn't mean that that necessarily movie was based on the truth it might have been infrastructured with other things so uh, the sorry I had to take this off to uh, <laughs> make sure I'm not getting bombarded by other text messages. Anyways, the, the missionaries, let's go back a thousand years ago or something, or even longer than that. The missionaries, when they went into these villages and stuff, for one thing, the people had no idea about religion. So you can go and you can tell anybody anything. It's called brainwashing, and it's very easy to do. Trust me, I can tell you many stories that I have going through uh, Papua New Guinea to tell you how easily persuade they could be by me just being there, okay? So for one thing, that these missionaries, they come there and they told me firsthand of what they did. Like they come there and they say, oh, we want to tear down all this, this jungle land. It's flat. We want to make our air force uh, not Air Force, our uh, airspace base uh, for planes, you know, they're small planes to land. This is crazy, like this is how much money they have. But the people of villages, they don't understand about airplanes and money or anything like this. You have to remember these people never even seen a dollar, have no idea what a dollar is. Actually, many people don't even know how money works, and which is pretty sad. I really highly recommend you watch some YouTube channels on how money was created, how money is played out, who controls the money in the world. All these questions should be asked. They're not asked in school because school systems don't want you to know. So I highly encourage you to actually sit down and watch this and actually learn about some of this. Just, you know, these basic questions. Where did money come from? Why was it created? Uh, who controls the money in the world? These questions should be answered and you should know what is going on why is this keep popping up um anyways the uh when you when you uh go to these villages and these missionaries have come there they basically told the people hey we want to cut down all this forest land so that we can land our airplane so we can come easier in and out of your area so we can brainwash you people okay because basically these missionaries gave nothing to these people actually what they did they come and they stole everything so according to the legends of png about 400 years ago the germans actually invaded or conquered or 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 came about to png uh, and about 400 years ago when they came there 
they basically the people the locals and stuff and the myths or the stories still go around where they say that you can go down the rivers and it would be nothing but shining jewelry diamonds and rubies and gold was everywhere laying right on top of the riverbed stones and the and the people there they had no idea that this was worth money or anything to them they just thought it was another rock that's it they just thought it was a stone so to them, they just left it there. They, they, they just left it there. And when the Germans came in and they brought a little bit of clothes and a little bit of insights of, of brainwashing materials of religion, the people, the vill village people, as you can see, even in my film here, of how happy they are to see me, how much they just come out shaking my hand. They want to talk to me. They want to feed me. This is how the people truly are there. It's so amazing how the people are. Like to just approach you like this. Uh, as to most people in their minds, they look at films and people die on certain islands like the island near India. Or they go to the Amazon and people are very scared. But here they're not. They're actually more wide open about it. Like, oh wow, a new person, you know. Come, come, you know. It was uh, really amazing because not one time I had any problem with anybody. And every time was just a blessing that people just was giving me a place to stay giving me food and just praising me almost like telling me stay please stay longer um anyways when the so i got right now i have a green wall behind me so i'm trying i want to do a new film and i'm hoping that it comes through i want to do my film and then play my old film on my png and have my face kind of in the corner in the middle of the film. I don't know. I'm going to see if it works. If it doesn't, I'm just going to explain to you what I am doing right now anyways. So when the, when the people uh, invited me and stuff, they did the same thing with the missionaries of the Germans. And the Germans come there and seen all this gold. This is kind of what how World War I and World War II uh, came about also. So I'll kind of explain to you the reason behind this too because when the germans come there seen all this gold the people basically the germans said hey we need to pick up these rocks i want them and the village people were like why do you want the rocks okay we will give you the rocks take all the rocks you want take them all away we don't care you know and the germans kind of brought a little bit of things to them like some salt pepper some maybe different uh plants and uh and you know different little small little things while also bringing the people the brainwashing materials of religion so basically this is how germany got rich you know a lot of people do not know this and it's probably not really written in history books too much so you would have to really dig deep to understand this and i'm just letting you know the truth because this is what they've told me so once the japanese people came there during uh, right, right around World War One and right before World War Two, Japan kind of invaded uh, Germany, and this is kind of where Japan and Germany are uh, connected together. But no one really understands why, or the reason what they, why were they connected way out into the islands? So the islands is because it was full of gold. So the Germans have been there for so many hundreds of years, and when the Japan come there. Uh, Germany was basically like, oh, you want you want to dig for gold? Fine, dig for it. Dig all you want. We already got all what we needed. So the Germans just basically let them come in. And the Japanese are very smart people. And they come there and they basically come there with their machines and everything. Well, not only did Japan come there with their machines to dig gold, when they made their airstrip bases, and this will also be in my future films, that... They took all the coral from near the beaches and stuff, destroyed all the coral and made the airplane runways because coral is very, it's calcium. So it's very, very strong material and very perfect for airplane landing because every time coral breaks up, it gets smaller, smaller and smaller. And it's just, it's, it's calcium. It's hard as a rock. It's your tooth, you know. So over time, this is how the Japanese destroyed all the corals, or most of them, to make their runway of their planes. 
and they this is how japan got so strong because of all the gold and and jewelry and everything they were searching for on papua not just papua new guinea because before it was papua papua used to be basically oceania indonesia i explain this in my films too so oceania is basically like australia now and the solomon islands and things like that as to and then you have indonesia but papua used to be all of this it used to be actually the aborigine people used to come from australia there was no white people in australia a, a thousand years ago it was black people and Papua used to be Papua, Papua New Guinea, Australia, Solomon Islands, uh, Biak Island, basically half of Indonesia, and a lot of other islands too. This was all nothing but black people. And I was explaining you to you before about that I believe that the language, so language is so very strong to us, that and, and language takes a long, long time to to generate it's not like people just make up some words and oh bam you have a new language it takes a long time centuries to create this so i believe that with Papu papua if you counted all of them they would have over a thousand languages but just in Papua new guinea alone has over 850 languages not even no dialect is similar to the next and therefore i believe that their languages is the oldest in the world and therefore i believe that the people is the oldest in the world okay you can study this some more maybe i'm wrong but i believe i'm right anyways when the missionaries came there and told these people oh we want to make these runways these people basically just helped them they thought like they were like a god an angel and i was even surprised of how the people treated me there too they also thought i was a god or an angel i literally would be walking and people John would be like, that guy just called you a Papa God. And I was like, what? No way. And he's like, yeah. And uh, anyway, so if I want to, and maybe you might think I'm racist, but I'm not racist at all because I'm <laughs> going through villages and everything. But uh, the people are actually, if you look at uh, the world as a color code, same thing as women or even men look at uh, plants or specifically roses as a color code you see white as like a healing you see red as love and black as evil and and so on and so forth well white is definitely like the prime color of of healing and stuff and sadly to say okay the white people we are looked at differently than the black people and this is just because the context of our eyes and how our mind works and the philosophy behind how we were created i don't i'm not saying that we're better than anyone else but i do feel that the color code makes you more vibrant than another color okay let's just keep it as that and i feel that when the people first initially see white they automatically feel this different vibrant energy and when you see this automatically then you're you adjust your your uh thinking and your compassion about everything so when the when the people seen me they instantly thought wow this is like a god this is a jesus and i'm sure that this has been infrastructed in their mind over the religious beliefs thinking that jesus is white maybe he was black who really knows but uh, I just think that being with this instantly makes people automatically adjust to the situation. So, therefore, when the people seen me, they automatically seen me as this supreme being, if you want to say that. I'm sorry, like I say, I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm just telling you the truth of how I felt and how I really seen it out there. And... If they seen me as this, imagine them a thousand years ago, how they would treat the people. And how would the, how easily it is to manipulate a person when they're so in love with you. This you can easily still do to this day, just by where pe one, one if 
a man or a woman is in love with another and they people actually use or abuse them this happens all the time so same thing way with the religious people and the way that the people manipulated people to get what they wanted to get to get they still do it to this day governments start race wars all the time this again they do it to manipulate people to do whatever they can to keep the power and money in charge so think a thousand years ago was even more easily to manipulate the people and when the people got manipulated that's what happened germany manipulated them then when japan came in japan didn't kind of manip manipulate them because japan already had the power this is kind of when guns were already created swords and cannons and all this and japan was very during this time frame japan was one of the most supreme countries in the world and they had the mentality of killing quite easily and even hearing the png people's stories of how easy it was where when japan came in and if the people didn't listen to them japan people will wipe out whole entire village tribes so what these villages and people used to do is when Japan came in, they hated Japan because they killed so many of them. And the PNG people are survival survivalists and they know how to survive in the jungle. So they all left their villages and went ran deep into the jungles. And over the next, you know, I don't remember a time frame, but over the next, you know, decade or so, Japan was basically overrunning uh Papua people stealing their gold, uh, enslaving the people to demand people for their the gold and stuff. And then what had happened was, uh, you know, during World War Two, is or right before it is when America invaded Papua New Guinea. And this again isn't really talked too much on history books because it's all hush hush, don't say nothing, nothing ever happened there, blah blah blah. But the real story of what happened was Papua which has the biggest gold mine in the world. It's called Tamika. Google it. It's so huge you can see it from outer space. It's so huge that there used to be snow in, in the mountaintop of Papua, and now there's no longer no more snow because they're digging so deep down into the ground that all the Earth's heat is coming up, up and melting all the snow. Sorry, there used to be glaciers and no more. You can Google all this if you want. And guess who owns the company to dig the gold? An American company. Wow, you know, oh, shoes. <laughs> so this is the reason why basically America just drew a line directly into the center of Papua to say this is Indonesia and this is Papua New Guinea. Who controls Indonesia? America. That's why Indonesia has full of American military weapons. Okay? Again, you, I'm not trying to preach any of this. I'm just giving you the highlights. You, I hope you can look it up and Google all this stuff on your own. And I just kind of want to just want to give you the basics on all this knowledge that I gained from being there. And I really hope you look it up. Uh, I really hope that you continue watching my films. I really hope that you share them because basically it seems that like YouTube is after me same as facebook has been after me and same as instagram it's just unreal that i you know maybe okay call me bitching or cry baby whatever you want but it's unreal i've been doing this for over four years now and i have barely over 500 subscribers this is honestly this is sad you know and i really wish that the people would just be a little bit more you know supportive of me um how much I've learned, how much I, I'm trying to broadcast out there to the public, how much I want people to learn the truth about things, how much I've seen in the world that no one else would dare to even go and see. And I should be having thousands of subscribers, but it just seems no one wants to comment on my stuff. No one wants to even click a like. And this really helps out YouTube because when you put, have so many likes, when you have so many views, when you are the top watcher, okay, if you just watch my show and you only watch 30 seconds in a 10 minute film, why would YouTube post me up in the top five of the uh, of a of another uh, title of Poppy New Guinea or something like this? They they wouldn't. They would have me at the bottom. 
because they would think like, oh, my film is worthless. So my supporters should honestly, at least if you don't want to watch my film, at least just let it play and go make a sandwich or something. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, you know, or at least click like, click the thumbs up, you know. And at least, how hard is it to share? My films are not that bad. Like, I don't understand this. This is just crazy, you know, of how much I've learned, how much I broadcast, how much I'm trying to tell people things, how much I've learned, and I can't hardly get anything out of my supporters. It's really, truly sad. But I'm going to, regardless, keep making my films because I think my films are amazing. And yes, maybe they could be better. Uh, yes, maybe I can do things better, but I'm one person. I'm not feeding YouTube, you know, $100 a day by putting me on top. It's just me and me by myself. So I'm doing the best I can. So the supporters I do have, I wish that I can just get better ones. If you don't know the language or something, it's so easy to hit the... I mean, then your own language can come up and you can, all my words will come up in your language. Yes, they might not be perfect, but at least you get to follow along with what I'm saying. So anyways, uh, I'm really happy if you are watching my films. This is my sixth one or maybe my seventh. I don't know if I'm going to separate this film because some people might complain that they're already too long. Uh, this again, this is why I wanted to make a movie series out of this and hopefully try to sell it. But again, with my supporters, eh, I'm going to get nowhere. So I might as well at least try to gain more support and more views, at least by making these films. Uh, I did do so much. I seen so much in Papua New Guinea. It truly was an amazing experience. If anyone wants to go there, you can easily email me. You can also read my blog under forestdestiny.com. I've written so much about Wamena and Papua New Guinea and also other places, how to save money and everything. And you can easily see in my film how easy it is to save money. You just have to fly there. And then you, once you go there, the people will easily, you can talk to the people in English, find out where how to get to like the Sepik River or at least just go to the highlands um, and, you know, just be smart, you know, make sure that you're with good people and you see how the people carry homemade guns around. They, they honestly, they, they act like they're going to go to war, but, and I don't want to frighten you or anything, but I never seen anything when I was there. I thought it was, it was a joke almost like, why why you people think that everyone is out to get everybody because i didn't see nothing wrong with anything i really thought that the people were so peaceful i think it's just more or less if you're ignorant to the, some situations or kind of stupid about things then of course maybe you can get in trouble but honestly if you just go there tell the people i want to go this i want to go there you're in a boat full of people you see everyone is so nice you see how many times i went to different villages and not one time i had a confrontation and right now it's just about a week into my experience into the jungle so i still have about another over another week of experience and i have so much more to talk about and so much more to say so please subscribe and please follow along and please share my content so i can at least get some more support so thank you very much have a great day peace out